billion trillion million billion trillions of orbiting snowballs orbiting snowballs orbiting a flat fact a flat fact the realm do you know what the realm is a story we agree to tell each other over and over till we forget that it's a lie if you let them take your children they'll come for mine operation pied piper this is not the first time they came for the children this is not the first time love for family love for their fellow man was used to manipulate the masses deprive them of basic necessities and remove children from their parents operation pied piper was a british military operation ran by the ministry of health created in 1931 and 8 years later in 1939 Operation Pied Piper went live, and the Piper came for the children. In the first three days of the official evacuation in 1939, 1 1.5 million people in Britain were moved. The majority were children. The, majority the government children. decided that it was better for the safety of the children from the threat of war and maybe infectious disease that they all be sent away. By the end of the Second World War, millions of children would never see their parents again. This is not just evidenced in the historical record, it is evidenced by people still alive who suffered through this time. It is a matter of living record. in particular a triumph of orderly precision. From the crowded towns, children in their thousands left homes and parents behind and went away to live in the safety zones under the care of their teachers. And here, another consoling thought, most of the youngsters went away cheerfully enough. For them, fortunately, the whole procedure seemed to hold no terrors and was even regarded as a holiday. With food and clothing provided by their parents, and each carrying a gas mask. Don't let them take your children. With food and clothing provided by their parents and each carrying a gas mask, these children are labelled like luggage, carrying a small port, one change of clothes inside and some food. They entrain for their excitingly unknown destination. They're carrying little suitcases off to some unknown destination. How long will they be away? How long before they again return to live under the same roof with their parents? How long will they be away? How long before they again return to live under the same roof as their parents? Some of these children will never see their parents again. Don't let them take your children. How long will two sets of clothing last? Note here that the same three-day evacuation of the children scenario also happened in Germany. More on that later. Leading up to and during the Second World War, this building was the headquarters of the Ministry of Information, which was the inspiration in George Orwell's 1984 for the Ministry of Truth. Orders of the Ministry of Information, which controlled the press, propaganda and censorship. So in many ways, very much like the Ministry of Truth in the novel. And he would see this building every day and it stands proud above its landscape. The Ministry of Information, much like the Ministry of Truth, controlled the press, propaganda and censorship. Only the official news from the military slash government was fed to the people. Upon researching through old newspapers of the day, it struck me very clearly that the underlying manipulation was using the human's love. They use the love of parents to make them believe that sending their precious babies away was the right thing to do. 
Don't well, do was it? Children. It is a matter of record that a great multitude of these children never saw their parents Don't again. Don't let them take your children. The children were labelled and exported to the country areas of Britain and some eventually being exported to other countries including Australia where they were promised sunshine and rainbows but most were put to work. Many treated as slaves with abhorrent conditions, some physically and or sexually abused. Many are still alive today. As I said, it is a matter of living record. The wars of the past have been romanticized by movies, books, tales of bravery, tales of love, fiction and fantasy tales, the machinations of media. Case in point, Operation Pied Piper. I thought it was very strange that the British military in 1931 would name a military operation after a fairy tale based in the German town of Hamelin where children are taken away from their parents forever. Presented to us as children as a fairy tale with the moral of paying the piper, it is in fact a horror story. The little town of Hamelin in Germany is all of a sudden overrun with rats. The people try many things to no avail. Then the pied man with the magical pipe comes to town and addresses the mayor of Hamelin and he says he can remove all the rats for a fee. The mayor and the town are at their wit's end and agree to the fee and the agreement. When the town is asleep, the Pied Piper plays a tune on his magical flute that only the rats can hear and the rats are compelled to follow him into a cave and disappear forever. When the townspeople awaken in the morning, there are no rats and the townspeople are very happy. The Pied Piper returns and meets with the mayor for payment, but the mayor refuses to pay and after an intense argument, the Piper leaves. But that night, he returns and he plays a tune on his magical flute that only the children can hear. And all the children except for three follow the Pied Piper into a cave and just like the rats, disappear forever. So almost 10 years before World War II, the British military names an operation after a story based on a German legend slash fairy tale of children being taken away from their parents forever. The beginning of C.S. Lewis's Chronicles of Narnia, The Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe, the story is set at the beginning of the Second World War. A father has been sent away. We see four children kissing their mother goodbye, boarding a train to be billeted in a large manor home owned by an unmarried professor and attended to by his female housekeeper. The day after the children arrive, the children, still in the same clothing they arrived in, explore the many rooms of the professor's grand mansion and happen upon the large old wardrobe. Lucy, the youngest, enters and proceeds to the back of the wardrobe where she sees a light. She enters into a land of snow. Lucy returns and convinces her three siblings that the wardrobe is magical and the four children enter the wardrobe and are transported to the land of Narnia where they have exciting and scary adventures far away from the reality of being taken away from their mother, their family, their home and their friends. In the 1930s it was widely feared that a new war would start with a massive bombing of Britain's cities from the air. We can see by the British newspapers published in the 1930s 
Warfare propaganda was fed to the general public on a daily basis in subtle and not so subtle ways. By the time Operation Pied Piper went live in 1939, many of the dads had been sent away to military training. The mums left alone with the radio and newspapers had been whipped into such a frenzy of fear for the safety of their children that they willingly allowed the government to gather up the children and send them away to locations of the government's choosing to stay in homes with unknown people. The mothers lined up in droves, filled in the forms, signed the paperwork, labelled their children and kissed them goodbye. Do you think the general public of Britain had any idea that Operation Pied Piper had been in the planning for some eight years? Of course not. The general public is not privy to military operations. Now let's have a look at the child evacuation scheme in Germany. And please, ladies and gentlemen, let us notice the similarities between the British and German taking of the children, keeping in mind that we know Britain started planning Operation Pied Piper eight years before the war. The German government's military operation was called Kinder Transport. Quote, Fearing that the war would result in mass civilian deaths and affect its future generations, the German government under the leadership of Adolf Hitler ordered that the children and mothers with infants be evacuated to rural locations and other parts of the country which were considered safer. The evacuation exercise happened in numerous phases. It is estimated that the first phase of children evacuation that happened over a three-day period saw more than 800,000 children evacuees relocated by special trains and boats to the locations considered to be safe, such as Saxony, Bavaria and Prussia. It is estimated that around 2.5 million children in Germany were removed under orders from Adolf Hitler. Surprisingly, many of these children from Germany were transported to Britain. David Attenborough of documentary fame in 1938 had children from Germany stay with his family when he was a child. In Germany, the true purpose of the evacuation program was masked. Instead, the trips were called recreational. In KLV homes across the country, run by the Hitler Youth, children were exposed to Nazi propaganda and parliamentary drills, and many were very homesick. The KLV evacuation program did not always succeed in sheltering the children from the effects of the war. Towards the end of the war, German children were increasingly brought in to help with the war effort. One such girl is Eleanor, age 16, who had to help out at the train station in Sagan, where many refugee trains carrying ethnic Germans from the east came through. In a school essay she wrote, we had to unload 30 children from the wagon who had hypothermia. They were all dead. End quote, Newcastle University. Where is this living historical record I've spoken of? And where are these children now? As of the 11th of March, 2020, the children who survived Operation Pied Piper and Kinder Transport are now, once again, prevented from seeing their families by the government because the government said it's the right thing to do. Once again, these children of Pied Piper carry a mask. Our old people, 80 years and older, people's parents, grandparents, great-grandparents. Lest we forget, did you forget? Did you let them take these children away? How many of you have not seen these children who by some miracle survived Operation Pied Piper? Now pay attention to this. 
The period between the time Operation Pied Piper went live in September 1939 until World War II was declared in September of 1940 was one year. The historical documents declare this time period as the phony war. The war they said would happen, and then it didn't. Mothers who were sick with grief at not seeing their children took to the countrysides to find their babies and bring them back home. The Ministry of Information went into overdrive and released much propaganda telling these mothers to leave the children where they are. Propaganda was released also that was presented directly to the children. Don't let them take your children. Don't let them take your children. Don't let them take your children. 